Hey, everybody. Welcome to the live stream here with Papa Bear, covering some of the news that's going on today. So, of course, Trump is in court today. I made a video on this channel, on my YouTube channel, about that earlier. Big win. It's a nothing case. It's not going to happen, guys. Just another piece of crap that they're throwing at the wall, hoping that something sticks. Uh, now, I want to bring you guys onto Fox. There's an issue going on with the Golden Gate Bridge. So let's take a look. Looks like anti-Israel protests are blocking traffic nationwide. You know, we've got San Antonio, we've got Chicago, we've got Golden Gate Bridge. Do these people really think anything's going to get done? They're just going to make people late to get to go on where they need to go. and It's just going to piss people off. It's not like they're going to stop in this traffic and be like, oh, yeah, we should totally have a ceasefire in Gaza because you're blocking traffic on the bridge while I'm trying to get to work. Give me a break. All right, let's tune in here, guys, and see what's going on. You're on the left side of your screen there, Golden Gate Bridge. But just goes to show, guys, this is taking place in multiple cities and uh, traffic and commutes getting held up all over the place. You know, these these protesters have in the past, they, they've used PVC pipe uh, with chains to handcuff themselves together. Uh, we've also seen them glue their hands to the ground, to other things. And you got to wonder, Bill, maybe those folks that you see there, got, the fellow in the dark jacket and uh, the people on the right, maybe they've got their hands glued to those cars. That's just a thought, but we'll see. Uh, all right, Bill Malusian yep. for us. Thank you, Bill. Yep. And we'll be right back with more coverage. Stay with us. Electric for short mm. trips. Gas for long. Mm. All right. Well, I won't make you guys <clears throat> watch commercial break there. Um, so let's kind of go over to <clears throat> X and kind of see what else is is going on. Um, I, I made a video. I haven't posted it yet, you guys, uh, about the the extended vote that's going to happen today, uh, roughly six thirty Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's going to be happening on the House floor. Uh, it's going to be a revote, essentially, of the vote Friday um, that would essentially – it's an, a vote on an amendment that would essentially require warrants for FISA and the FBI to be able to spy on the American people. So um, all the credit to Anna Paulina Luna. She made this happen. She forced this vote. And the, the great thing about this is, is that there was a representative, a GOP rep, who um, – was absent for Friday's vote, who has come out and voiced her support for the amendment. So if all things go according to plan, the amendment should pass and it will require warrants uh, for, you know, FISA and the FBI to spy on the American people. I can't believe this is even an issue in today's day and age, but that's a win. Um, all right. So I'm looking here real quick. Bear with me. Of course, Trump trial here has been going on this morning in Manhattan in the hush money case, the much do about nothing case. Let's see. I'm just kind of waiting here for uh, Fox to come back from commercial. I don't want to make you guys watch commercials. Bear with me here. So, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about the uh, the situation going on today with Trump in court. Do you agree with me that it's a big nothing burger? Let me know your guys' thoughts. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. And, of course, let me know what you guys think about this Golden Gate Bridge situation. Uh, to me, I mean, it's it's like it's the same thing with, the, with these protests. I mean, these protests – they're not, they don't achieve anything, right? I mean, all these, for a while, it was the climate, you know, protesters who were blocking traffic and, and now it's the, you know, the pro Gaza, pro Hamas, anti-Israel protesters who are blocking traffic. It's like, what do you guys think is going to happen when you block traffic? Again, it's not like people are just going to all of a sudden be like, Hey, I'm totally on your side. You're blocking traffic. You convinced me. I'm going to go ahead and hear what you have to say. No, they're going to be pissed. They're going to honk at you. They're going to likely try to run you over. I mean, damn. All right, guys, we're still at commercial break here. Hey, John Fitch, we need peace. Welcome to the live stream. Thanks for joining, guys. 
All right. <clears throat> yeah. So just kind of going through some of the things that are trending. Um, you know, mostly what's going on now with the bridge, Donald Trump in court today. I mean, the funny thing about this uh, this hush money case is that, that even Avenatti, former attorney to Stormy Daniels, and of course, former attorney for Donald Trump, uh, the disgraced Avenatti from jail, saying uh, to MSNBC that the case is election interference um, and that that's all they're trying to do is just to interfere in the election. And we all know that. Right. I mean, I think the large majority of the American people, whether you're on the left or the right, know that that's just an election interference smear campaign that they're running against Donald Trump, along with all these other indictments. Right. And I, I, I think the majority of people are starting to come around to that because the reason why is that when these things happen, when you know Trump's in court, when new indictments come down, he just gains popularity in the polls. It's not working. Not only are they not going to get a conviction and put him in jail like they really want, but they're they're losing in the court of public opinion. He's just gaining more popularity and more traction. All right, guys. So let's uh, hop back in. It looks like they are back. Sorry about the camera, guys. Had a phone call come in. Bear with me. Bill Malugin is back with us now. Bill, our aerial shot is going back out again. And wow, is that incredible. Um, you think about just how far back that traffic is now going. And, and we just saw police a moment ago on that live footage uh, bringing in more vehicles. There was a, a trailer they brought in. Um, they were unloading some um, equipment. So who knows what the plan is here now? Uh, we're trying to get some law right, enforcement back. on the phone right now to, to explain to us what their options are for a situation like this. But these, this, these images are just incredible, Bill. Sandra, they are. And just moments ago, CHP California Highway Patrol actually posted on X, quote, there is no timeline for the reopening of this bridge. So it appears this may be going on for quite some time. John was mentioning earlier what may complicate the situation more is it, it may not just be the sort of thing where they can go in there and, and cuff people up and walk them out. If some of these people have maybe tethered themselves to these vehicles or glued their hands in uh, pipes or, or something more than meets the eye that's going on, because we can see some of the those people, they haven't left the sides of those cars, and some of them appear to have their arms inside the cars or, or something. Um, if there's something more complicated going on, it's obviously going to take law enforcement a longer time to get those people off the bridge. We've seen handfuls of them arrested so far, but only a few of them remain. And Sandra, you mentioned it. It was a wild live shot to see that traffic going as far as the eye can see. This is also Chicago's O'Hare Airport this morning, where protesters there, anti-Israel protesters, block traffic. The the result of which was people were trying to make their flights. So you can see they're getting out of their cars, getting out of their Ubers with their luggage and then walking into the airport, trying to make their flights. Those people obviously not happy as all that traffic was backed up there. We're also watching images out of San Antonio, Texas. You can see that in the bottom right of your screen. Uh, more protests there. We're also getting word there are going to be some protests in Philadelphia today as well. And also protests forming in New York City. So this is, again, a nationwide effort by these anti-Israel protesters to disrupt traffic, disrupt commerce, disrupt the going about of people people's daily lives uh, to get, okay, now you're taking a live look in Manhattan right now. You can see those protests starting in New York City as well. So this is coast to coast. What a dueling live shot there. You got the Golden Gate Bridge shut down for more than three and a half hours in both directions now. Uh, you had O'Hare Airport having people getting blocked there, trying to make it to their flights. Now you got New York City live on your television right now, protests sparking off there as well. So again, this is going to be that concentrated effort that these pro-Palestine protesters have used in the past to try to disrupt people's lives to get their message out. Now, will that be effective? You'd have to ask the people who are getting blocked in traffic right now. Uh, you're taking a live look at the left side of your screen once again. It looks like the fire department is now on scene. Uh, you can see they've got a big bus there likely for oh no that's sorry that's not a bus that uh, some sort of a chp unit so those firefighters may be potentially brought in in case some of those folks 
are glued to anything, tied to anything, chained to anything. That's when we've seen the firemen having to break those chains before that sort of a thing. So that may be what some of the holdup has been here. Uh, again, right side of your screen, New York City. You can see dueling protesters there, someone with uh, an Israel flag and an American flag waving it in the face uh, with a pro-Palestine flag right there. So uh, that's the sort of thing you can see there, counter protesters squaring off in New York City. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge shut down for the better part of almost four hours now with CHP reporting just 15 minutes ago, quote, there is no timeline for the reopening of that bridge. Also watching scenes play out in San Antonio, Texas, and we show those images out of Chicago O'Hare Airport. So a lot going on all across the country today, guys. We'll We're it watching it all as a White House briefing is right now taking place with John Kirby and Queen Jean-Pierre. Uh, Peter Ducey's in the room, and certainly we're monitoring. If any of this comes up, we'll certainly bring that to our viewers. Uh, if you could, Bill, just stand by with us on the breaking news. John? Yep. All right. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Let's continue digging into all of this. Joining us by phone is retired NYPD Inspector Paul Morrow. And Paul, we, we don't have any confirmation of it. And there's not even really anybody talking about it online. But we see three individuals in that first row of cars who are standing right beside the cars and have not moved for as long as we've been watching these pictures. We have seen in Germany and other places, people use industrial strength glue to glue their hands to the road. And I remember seeing a couple of female protesters who were in the hospital. They'd actually, uh, emergency services had cut out the road around their hand and they were standing there in the emergency room with big chunks of asphalt attached to them. And I'm wondering, and along with Bill, is, is that the situation here? Looks like they are doing something. So from what I can see, it looks like one of the female protesters has her arm in a tube that extends into the car. What that almost certainly is, is something they call a sleeping dragon. And what they do is they chain each to each other, one protester to another, inside a pipe. And so in order to disconnect them, you have to get through the pipe and then you have to get through the chains. In this case, what they seem to have done is one of the protesters is in the car and one is not in the car. I don't know what the status of the one in the car is, but she may be or he may be locked in there as well. Mm. All of these things are, are so the sleeping dragons are common. Usually they're sitting there. They're all chained together. And it's a nightmare. I've been on scene where you have to get them out. You have to uh, essentially like blowtorch through them. So. It, it's very complicated. It's just designed to throw sand in the gears of the police to slow everybody up. And as you said, this thing's already gone on for hours. There's no timeline for the removal. And that certainly is one of the reasons why. Just logistically, that's very difficult to do. You make sure you don't hurt anybody. And, uh, you know, so this will go on for quite some time going forward. You know, Paul, I don't think that we had conceived at this point of the concept of the potential that this was a coordinated effort. We're not saying that this is the case, but did did. Are, are, are the people in those first three cars in line there uh, part of this whole thing? And are people on the outside connected to people on the inside, as you suggest? Uh, from what I could see in the video, and it's difficult to see, but it looked like one of them had her arm in the tube. And if that's the case, I would argue that that's almost certainly what's going on there. And uh, as I said, that's a real difficulty. You know, this is something that goes back, some of this stuff goes back to the 60s, uh, some of it to Occupy Wall Street more recently, mm -hmm. where a lot of these techniques were, were sort of tested out. And generally, people who do these protests, they, they're in college, they go back to their lives. But what some of them do is they sort of graduate into management, for lack of a better uh, term, and it's a career path. They become organizers. They're funded by nonprofits, uh, George Soros foundations and the like. And they, they get money to do this thing. That's their lives. And, and some of them uh, actually make decent money. And so that's the institutional knowledge that they're allowed, that they're able to access. And that's why you see some of the techniques repeating over literally generations. And so, you know, you, this is the kind of thing that we saw very, very reminiscent of Occupy Wall Street and what it argues is that this looks pretty organized. We see various cities popping off on the same day. This argues that this is going to be, be with us yeah. through the summer, I would oh, say. Can I, can I jump in here? So um, as we're watching, uh, obviously, this is lower Manhattan, uh, Wall Street, screen right. But on, on screen left, the Golden Gate Bridge and the situation that's playing out there. I mean, people have been watching this wondering, like, why wasn't there anything immediately they could do when the protesters were just simply standing there to remove them? And, Paul, my question to you is, as we watch this happening more and more popping up in cities all over this nation, these protests, and, and some of which, like case in point, the one on our screen, has incredible consequences. 
what what can be done to send the message don't do this yeah that's the salient question isn't it so you know, again, I go back to Occupy Wall Street, which is a good rubric for this sort of thing. And, you know, every time you make the mass arrests that occur from these things, you immediately get sued. They all have lawyers on, on speed dial. And the courts are amenable to them. And the police know that. So they take a very gentle hand. Everything now is filmed. Everybody has a camera, even more so than during Occupy Wall Street. One of the ways these groups fund themselves is through lawsuits. They are regularly engaged in lawsuits against the city. So what can you do to prevent it? First of all, the earlier and faster you get in there, the better, Sandra. You're absolutely right. But what you need is intelligence. You have to know it's coming. This already looks like a pretty bad intelligence failure to me. Yeah. This is coordinated you know, online, different cities. They should have known it was coming. Uh, Paul, there's a pretty clear shot there. We're getting a lot closer. That vehicle on the right, the black vehicle, that fella does seem to have some sort of a pipe on his arm. And then on the left, the person in the uh, high-vis vest has got some sort of a pipe on uh, their arm as well. So it, it may be that this was a coordinated effort. Paul, if you would, stay, stay with us, and uh, we'll see if we can glean some more information. Maybe you can work your sources at California Highway Patrol and see exactly what's going on. Sandra? Yeah, this as the uh, purchase screen right in Manhattan seems to be growing in number at this hour as well. And by the way, on the Golden Gate, the update from law enforcement there, um, as we just reported a few moments ago, avoid US 101 in the area of the Golden Gate Bridge, no timeline for reopening. That was just a few moments ago. Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton is joining us now. Senator, uh, thanks for joining us in the breaking news. We have these live images up coast to coast. We're seeing these protests pop up. Uh, Bill Malugin standing by with us, Paul Morrow as well. First, your thoughts as we watch this together. Um, well, I I'm feel very deeply for all those people who are trying to get to work or trying to pick up a, a kid. Uh, very worried about the diversion of police resources when it needs to be stopping crime in cities like San Francisco, where firefighters are having to go there when they might have uh, calls for fires out. Um, I have to say, Sandra, I agree with you that you have to get to these pro or these uh, criminals early. If something like this happened in Arkansas on a bridge there, let's just say I think there'd be a lot of very wet criminals that have been tossed overboard, not by law enforcement, but by the people whose uh, road they're blocking. Uh, they need their hands to a car or a, the pavement. Okay. Probably pretty painful to have their skin ripped off, but I think that's what the way we'd handle in Arkansas. And I would encourage most people anywhere that get stuck behind criminals like this uh, who are trying to block traffic to take matters in their own hands. There's only usually a few of them, and there's a lot of people being inconvenienced. It's time to put an end to this nonsense. Uh, clearly, Senator, um, as we watch this together, and to your point about the way. Uh, different cities and states can react to this. You're obviously saying that in your state you would deal with this much differently. Um, as you heard from Paul Morrow, uh, speaking from a law enforcement perspective, um, they know that there's cameras on them. They know um, that they can't obviously hurt somebody uh, in the removal of these protesters. There's obviously a very delicate balance um, to, to dealing with this. And the longer it goes on, it would appear the longer it's going to take to resolve it. Is it yes, not illegal to block traffic? Law enforcement having to deal with this, Is that but not I, I an think infraction it's time for private police? citizens like who are the ones being inconvenienced here when they're confronted with these understand. protesters just to solve matters on their own before the uh, police even show up. Look, most of these people could be easily removed from the streets, and you've seen videos probably on the Internet of that being done in certain places. Those are always the most popular people on the scene are the private citizens who took matters into their own hands. But it's exactly this kind of radical activism this anti-Semitic pro-Hamas activism that are blocking streets and calling out police and firefighting resources, that you have Democrats like Joe Biden trying to restrain Israel, even after it's been attacked with 300 drones and missiles from Iran, or after October 7th, they face the worst atrocity against Jews since the Holocaust. They're worried about this radical wing of their own party doing this kind of thing now and doing it all through the summer, as you said earlier, and maybe even at their convention uh, this summer as well. It has to end now, and we can absolutely not tolerate this kind of criminal activity. If you want to march around on a sidewalk or in a public park and wave a flag in support of terrorist groups, that's one thing. But to block the flow of traffic on major highways, that is a crime, and it has to be stopped yeah. immediately. Uh, so, so as we continue to watch these pictures, the answer is the, the huge Iranian 
attempted strike against Israel uh, on uh, on Saturday night, which, which was an amazing display of counter firepower with the Israelis and the American Air Force and the Jordanians as, as well. But then we see uh, people in America cheering the Iranian attack. We, we see activists who are rehearsing people in chance of death to America. What, what do you make of what is going on in this country, Senator? It, J John, it's a revolting display of moral equivalence. I, I wouldn't just say it's going on in large parts of the country. It's going on in a large part of the Democratic left wing base, though. And again, that's why Joe Biden is doing things like threatening to withhold weapons from Israel or telling them they should just take the win. If you believe what uh, reports from anonymous White House officials mm -hmm. as if it's a win to have 300 missiles and drones shot at your country. Uh, I, I don't think the people of Israel can stand by and just let that become the new normal in the Middle East, no matter how skillful and brave their troops and our troops are and were in, in almost stopping every single one of them. Um, you'll see, I think, more peace and stability in the region and also an end to some of these uh, criminal criminal protests in America whenever you see an American president that stands strongly with Israel and our Arab partners against Iran and its terror proxies like Hamas, rather than try to appease and conciliate them both over there and here at home. Okay. Uh, Senator, if you could just stand by with us. Um, uh, again, we've got Paul Morrow and Bill Malugin joining us. We're watching the Golden Gate Bridge. Another arrest was just made, by the way. We're going to listen to what's happening now in lower Manhattan. Uh, we can dip in here and take some of the sound live. <laughs> There's a growing number of protesters. Yeah, I'm just reading a comment from John here. I don't think the media has ever been so extremely biased. News people used to pride themselves in reporting the truth. The truth was the gold standard for being a good journalist. Not anymore. You're exactly right, man. Absolutely. And, and it it's, it's so extreme on either side, right, that it's, it's so – what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh, – It's so extreme on either side. There, there's so much bias on either side that you can't really trust anything that you hear on the news, whether it's on Fox. I'm bringing you guys Fox now because this is kind of a breaking situation right now. Um, and, and obviously, I'm not going to show you guys a CNN feed or an MSNBC feed. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I, I do trust Fox's reporting in these types of situations. Um, but again, it, it's both sides are extremely biased. It's hard to trust any mainstream news network, which is why a lot of people have you know, left cable, left cable news and gone to places like Rumble and in some cases, YouTube, if you're following my channel or channels like, uh, you know, Q on Truthful USA or American Patriot News, things like that. So <clears throat> it's it's hard to trust the news that we hear, but the the mainstream media is starting to die and people are going more towards news on Rumble and social media platforms and X because Honestly, I get most of my news from X, and I'm assuming a lot of you guys do too. So um, that that is some unfiltered news that I feel like generally we can trust. And of course, the citizen journalists like myself, like American Patriot News, like Truthville USA, um, we try to bring you guys the truth because the mainstream media cannot be trusted anymore. So um, yeah, if you guys haven't already, please check out my, my friends Matt and Romeo at American Patriot News. Check out Q at Truthville USA great channels to bring you guys the news. Bring you the breaking news. There you see Wall Street uh, in the background of Lower Manhattan. A noisy afternoon as we see a very, very difficult morning for commuters on the opposite coast. Uh, and the Golden Gate Bridge shut down now for more than almost four hours now. Uh, and it continues to be a standoff with what I think we get clearly established now are protesters who have locked themselves in some way to people inside those vehicles. Let's just listen again for a second here. <laughs> OK, 
Republican and chanting, we are all Palestinians. Uh, and of course, what we saw over the weekend, too, was people cheering Iran's attack against Israel. Uh, and you just you wonder what your perspective is when you're cheering some 300 explosive projectiles that are headed toward a very populous area and the potential dangers of that if the U.S. Air Force, the Israeli Air Force, and the Jordanian Air Force hadn't shot down about 95% of them. We'll keep watching this. We'll be right back. Breathing clarity and clear is like... All right, guys, bear with me here while we're at commercial break here. Definitely a good opportunity to throw in some funnies. As you guys know, if you followed my channel for a while, I started off doing a lot of short content um, and a lot of political satire. Um, one of my favorites is the Babylon Bee. So bear with me here for just a moment. And I'll pull up some Babylon Bee stuff. Give, you, give everybody a good laugh here today. Just some headlines here from Babylon B. Let's take a look. Uh, Biden retali uh, retaliates against Iran by attaching note to pallet of cash. It says, please do not use for terrorism. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Rashida Tlaib condemns violence against innocent Iranian missiles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta love the Babylon B, man. They get them good. White House claims six billion to Iran, absolutely not related to exactly six billion worth of rockets being fired into Israel. <laughs> oh, good stuff. I love it. World in shock as murderous terrorist state ignores warning from imp impotent old man. <laughs> yeah. You guys hear that warning? He said, don't. Just don't. And then 24 hours, they do. I believe that's the same warning that he gave Vladimir Putin before invading the Ukraine. Don't. Yeah, nobody cares what you have to say, Joe. You're not you're not threatening anybody. Nobody's scared of you. <laughs> 18 year old trying to file her taxes, wishing her teachers had spent less class time on polyqueer trans theory. <laughs> Biden begins searching through trunk of Corvette, hoping to find nuclear codes. <laughs> God. Uh, it's a scary thought to think that this man is in charge of our nuclear arsenal. Um, however, on the flip side of that, we all know Joe Biden does not have access to the football. No way, shape, or form. It's all of his handlers. New Star Wars game lets you play as lesbian Jedi who drive Subaru land speeder. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Democrat governors promise they will do everything in their power to make elections appear legitimate. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Not going to happen this time. 2020, that was an off. That was a one-off situation. Ain't going to happen again. Yeah, World War III is really stressing me out, woman tells girlfriends over brunch. <laughs> All right, guys, so thanks for sticking here with me. Looks like we're coming out of commercial break here in just a second. Again, bear with me. Let's look at some more funnies here. <laughs> Sheila Jackson Lee <clears throat> asks why Elon Musk wants to colonize Mars since it's just a giant ball of spaghetti sauce. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this woman is an idiot. O.J. Simpson excited for God to tell him who the real killer was. Oh, man. Biden furious to be called home from beach just because World War III is starting. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. All right, guys, I'm going to hop back over to Fox here. Give me just a second. All right, there we go.
So guys, again, thanks for hanging out with me here today. I love doing these live streams. I'm starting to do them a little bit more now here on YouTube and on Rumble and on Twitter or X as well. So thanks for hanging out with me here. Give a shout out to some of the people in the chat. Of course, John Fitch, We Need Peace, Kat Garza, North Main Guy. Peter Pinkover, Susan Jefferson, thank you guys so much for your support. You guys make it worth it. You guys are the reason why I do this. Of course, the baby bears are having a good time in the background. All right, guys, let's get this sound back on. Should be coming back from commercial break here any second now. After a few more Jardians commercials and such. We need Jardians at each day start. As time went on, it was easy to see. I'm lowering my A1C. Jardians works 24 7 in your body to flush out some sugar. And for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease, Jardians can lower the risk of cardiovascular death too. Serious side effects may include ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to sudden worsening of kidney function, and genital yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. You may have increased risk for lower limb loss. Call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of infection in your legs or feet. Taking Jardians with a sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Jardians is really swell. My name is Rachel Nelson. I'm a Term 5 School of Medicine student, and today I'll be visiting the General Hospital as part of my clinical training. These visits have helped me prepare for my clinical years by giving me the chance to flex my lecture knowledge while also curating a care plan that applies to a real patient. Fiverr. Find the right freelance service right away. So that's how they're growing so fast. Yeah, I imagine they had way more employees than we do. I mean, look at the number of projects. Look at that frozen yogurt tap. Digital marketing, AI experts, web design. Raspberry mocha swirl. Unbelievable. Should we try that? I wish. I can't really digest dairy. Grow your business with freelancers. Fiverr. Trump on trial. Full coverage as it all kicks off in New York Supreme Court. Sean's all-star lineup breaks down the DA's case against the former president tonight on a can't miss Hannity. Where I'm asking, get the governors on the line and ask why are you allowing this? Uh, there's an open invitation for the governor. Yeah, we got Leo 2.0 sure. Terrell here. Uh, Leo, we no. have our calls into the I love Leo office. Terrell. Um, as we watch this Maga together, hat. I want to add this in right now. Um, on the number of protesters that are just off the bridge there in California, um, hundreds were gathered um, near 7th Street. An arrest had been made there as well. So you had the protests from early this morning, then the one right on the bridge. Uh, one of the local reporters shared video footage of the protesters standing in the middle of the highway, northbound 880, holding a sign reading A15 economic blockade for a free Palestine. Um, and the local reporters also reporting that the protesters had chained themselves to barrels there. Uh, and the Oakland protest, per their announcement they would do this, was part of a multi-city effort called the A15 economic blockade to block major economic arteries. Well, that is certainly happening uh, right before us on this screen, Leo. Yes, Sandra, and, and it's it's nationwide. And I would like to be your designated reporter for you and John to follow to see if there are going to be arrests, convictions, and imprisonment. That's going to be the key because these individuals are encouraged to do it again. There's a pattern practice going on. Yeah, Leo makes a really good point there, you guys. Like, I, I was literally just thinking the same thing. You know, nothing's going to come of these protesters. These these illegal activities and illegal shuttings down of of you know roadways and bridges and things like that. Nothing's going to happen. It's the same thing that happened in the summer of love, twenty twenty, with all of the BLM riots. Nothing came of that. 
they didn't get arrested. They got bailed out by Kamala Harris and her, and her fund. So it, it, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's not like these guys are, you know, J sixers who, you know, took a guided tour around the Capitol and are, are still in solitary confinement to this day, three years later. So nothing's going to happen with these guys, of course, because they're left leaning, right? It's the two tier justice system in action in its preliminary stages with this event right now. Nothing's going to come of this. Nothing. Not only nothing in terms of what they want to achieve, but also nothing in terms of punishment and repercussions for these people. So that was a very good point. I was literally thinking that exact same thing before Leo brought it up. People on the bridge who are going through that right now. All right, let's bring in uh, Chris Bedford and Juan Williams for more on all of this. First of all, uh, Juan, uh, these are people on the left. What do you think of what's going on? Yeah, I could well, do without Juan Williams' like commentary. Delayed. I think I you know, know my you. lifestyle. I'm always have to get somewhere. So it's a it's a great inconvenience. It's a problem, but it is not a crime. Let me just say, constitutionally protected First Amendment, proud American. Uh, although I think blocking a bridge like that may constitute some sort of crime. Yeah, you need a permit. I don't know. If, I don't know what uh, the crime would be, say blocking the you know a traffic crime, but it's not the crime of the level that we're thinking. I mean, obviously the Boston Tea Party. I guess that was a crime against somebody's property, throwing the tea in the river. But the idea of protest is very American. And what they're protesting against, and I might say, you point out that th this is on the... This guy is such a boob. Every time he talks, man, I just like palm to forehead. Oh, this is such an American thing to do. No, it's not American to shut down bridges and to stop emergency vehicles from being able to go in case of emergency or police presence, things like that. This is illegal. This is not First Amendment protected, you know, protest right now. This is illegal and it's wrong. And God, I am just so annoyed every single time Juan William comes on and opens his big mouth. For Israel, uh, the last couple of days have seen them be able to hit a top Iranian uh, uh, Revolutionary Guard uh, commander. That seen them working with Jordan and the United States and France to stop an Iranian attack. You've, you've seen now Democratic support in Congress has increased dramatically because of this attack on Israel. And then you see the responses to block traffic, like you said, with people coming uh, coming back and trying to get to their jobs, maybe to get to school, maybe to get to a doctor's appointment, uh, maybe women who are pregnant, people who are sick, people who are elderly. Uh, this is not the way to win supporters. And you know, there, there are legal ways to protest. We see them over DC all the time, but uh, this, they, they knew they were doing something wrong and illegal here, and you can tell because of the way that they're, they've chained themselves together with these pipes. It's, a, it's an age-old, uh, I think it originally started by the animal rights groups and some mm -hmm. of the environmentalist groups' tactic to make it so difficult for law enforcement to stop them from breaking the law. So, so to your point, uh, Juan, it is a state crime to block a highway like this. Uh, penalties vary depending on the jurisdiction. Uh, Senators Barrasso and Blackburn want to make it a federal crime to do this. They've introduced legislation just the past couple of months, but uh, like so many other things, it appears to be languishing in Congress. But this, taken with what we have seen uh, over the weekend with people cheering the attack by Iran against Israel, people rehearsing other folks in, in calls of death to America, death to Israel, uh, people saying from the river to the sea means that complete annihilation of the Jewish state. I mean, the, the polarization here in America is getting to a point where some folks are looking at this and saying, is it going to explode? Well, with good reason, because, you know, I mean, obviously, when you see this kind of activity, you don't know what's next. Now, let's just be clear. When you talk about explode, this is all so far, thank God, nonviolent protest. Uh, and we should signify that this is a, not a violent act. But to your larger point about us as Americans, it's going global, the protest. Yeah, they also Israel. said that in the summer of 2020, uh, no, mostly yeah, peaceful protests. Yeah, uh, Chris, sure. final thought? You know, the, one thing that's interesting about this is you didn't see these sorts of protests during the massive, the massacres of Arabs and the Syrian conflict or uh, the Libyan conflicts. You see this really only when it regards to Israel. And I said, so that I think gives pause to a lot of folks who say, why is it only when it involves the Jewish state as, a, as opposed to mm -hmm. just the defense of Arab lives like they always claim? Yeah, I mean, I don't see a lot of people out there protesting the fact that Iran attacked Israel with 300 explosive projectiles. It's because this world, and now by extension, this country is deeply rooted in anti-Semitism, right? This, 
the this since October 7th, it's really come to the forefront, not only just the general population of the world, but this country and select members of Congress. It just goes to show just how deeply anti-Semitic they are. And even still, you know, what, 80 years after the Holocaust, there's still so much anti-Semitism in this world and in people's hearts. And it's it's a damn shame. It really is. Others, you don't have the right to cause danger or potential violence. You don't have the right to obstruct first responders and law enforcement from doing their jobs. As we watch the images on the screen, this is an absolute nightmare for law enforcement. But they're looking at it from a very different perspective. Even, you know, obviously people are inconvenienced, but law enforcement, they're always looking at safety. And they're looking at the safety of the citizens and potential threats that could be going on right here. The most important thing, obviously, is to contain the scene. You've got a scene where you've got a bridge. No one can even move. It's just completely locked down. Um, their law enforcement is concerned about potential threats. I guarantee you they are scrubbing all sorts of things, social media accounts and anything else where they can find any intelligence that this was a pre-planned event, anything that may have been planned that could uh, transpire. That's their top concern right now. Have people been checked? Uh, you know, we're looking at these images, those that are causing this, those that are, um, you know, doing these, these strikes and these protests. Have they been checked? Is law enforcement identifying who they are? Have these people been checked for potential, I, I, not to sound extreme, but potential, uh, if they want to cause harm or damage, uh, potential explosive devices, anything that could cause harm, damage, or violence to Americans right now? The Golden Gate Bridge, it's iconic. Okay, that is a prime time target if there was to be a potential mm -hmm. uh, danger or attack. So law enforcement is looking at that extremely closely right now. But an, an, an improvised explosive device or anything that would threaten the bridge or the integrity of the bridge is of preeminent importance right now to law enforcement and protecting those that are on that bridge, for instance, in San Francisco. Um, have any of these individuals been identified? Have any of them been on the radar of law enforcement or the intelligence community in the you know recent past history? Um, that's that's extremely important to law enforcement. So again, you have your right to speak up, but you don't have the right to inconvenience or cause danger to other citizens. Uh, you know, we, we are getting some spectacular pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge and the Marin County shoreline there as uh, we look at the 1.7 mile long span constructed way back in 1933 and all the cars that are sitting there going southbound from Marin County into San Francisco. And Nicole, it looks like what happened here is that you had three cars who were coming in the southbound lanes, which are the Oceanside lanes, and they slowed down mid-span. Uh, people got out of the car. I guess they probably unfurled a banner. And then some of them used what Paul Morrow referred to as sleeping dragons to chain themselves either to the vehicle itself or to someone inside the vehicle. And that's what's causing this huge delay here because they got all the other protesters out of the way and arrested seven of them. But how do you how do you get people out of those sleeping dragon devices? You know, this is something that they're strategically planning right now, but this this they've got to be taken off and they have got to let, you know, people get back to their their life and people need to be safe. And right now what's even more Yeah. All right. Um Nick uh, yeah, go ahead, finish your thought. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, sorry. What's even more dangerous right now is we all know what happens. People become on edge. When you start inflicting on their life, those, look at all those individuals that are completely trapped, okay? Tempers are gonna be short, and this is when violence starts breaking out. So everyone needs to remain calm, keep your cool, trust law enforcement. They're doing the best that they can in these protests. Again, you have your right to make your voice heard. You do not have the right to cause danger or inflict, you know, inconvenience on other citizens. That's not okay. All right, uh, Nicole Parker, these pictures are really something. I mean, look at the bus there. Um, just an entire bus potentially full of people um, that has been just parked there for hours now. Uh, Nicole Parker joining us live on that by phone. We appreciate that. Um, we are going to keep our eye on this as it is breaking news. There's also this breaking news on former President Donald Trump. 
uh, in court at this hour, the state Supreme Court. That's a live look outside of it here in New York City. The judge just announced the 90, that 96 jurors prospective jurors had been brought into the courtroom. That happened just now. There are a total of 200 jurors present today. So they are being sworn in, John, and that is obviously breaking news and we'll keep monitoring the courthouse for news. Yeah, um, you know, going back to San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge, those folks have been trapped in their cars now for four hours and they were probably in the cars for a period of time oh, prior to getting stuck on the bridge. Porta yes. potty. They're getting out of their cars and oh, running into the porta potty. <laughs> Somebody brought up porta potty. <laughs> I told you that was going to be an issue. Uh, we should point out, though, uh, it's just 57 degrees there. So it's not like folks are stuck on, you know, 90 degree temperatures. So uh, total inconvenience, a lot of discomfort. They're turning some vehicles around there, as you can see, yep. heading them back into Marin County. That is going to take a long time for that to happen. Okay, so we're going to keep our eye on this. We'll be back on the other side of the break with more breaking news. You were diagnosed with thyroid eye disease a long time ago. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Thanks to Sky Rizzi, I'm on my way with clearer skin. Three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. And Sky Rizzi is just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms. This high. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out for me for a little bit. Um, if the news continues to break on this situation, I will come back with you. Um, I'm going to have to sign off for now. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, because, of course, the news is always breaking. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys in the next one.